So I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and basically say that I know a lot about Bullet from My Valentine and what they particularly sound like even now. I basically only know them from Tears Don't Fall and that's really about it. If you know me and the whole emo scene metal core thing that went back on in the mid to late 2000s into the early 2010s, it wasn't necessarily my thing. I may have been listening to bands in that genre, but I wasn't listening to everything. <laughs> and aside from the one song from Bullet For My Valentine, I never really just paid attention. I never heard any of their other songs. And I had heard people talk about their 2018 album Gravity and how bad it was. And in my head, you know, because I had never heard it before, I said, is it really that bad as people say it is? Are Bullet From My Valentine really that bad as they say they are? Because they started out as like this metal core. They basically, well, actually, you know what? We'll get to that in a second. I just want to go through basically what I think of Bullet From My Valentine and see if people talking are just upset because maybe they changed their sound from what they used to sound like over the years, this, that, and the other. It, it Sometimes fans just get upset with that stuff and it makes me wonder, are they saying that because they just aren't heavy anymore? Or are they saying that because it's just truly getting worse and worse as time goes on? So I'm here to really opinionative, but still going to debunk it for you guys right now. So basically, what happened was in 1998, there was this band called Jeff Kill John, which would later be renamed Bullet For My Valentine, that started out as more of this new metal type band, as this was around the time that new metal was booming, thanks to bands like Limb Biscuit, Korn, Deftones around this time, and later down the line you would have like Linkin Park come into the mix, and all these other bands, whether good or bad, it was what was popping at the time, and I listened to some of that stuff, and yeah, it was basically like a discount saliva, and saliva's not that good to begin with, so in the end I can see why they ditched the new metal altogether, changed their name, and became Bullet From My Valentine, which they ended up releasing their debut album, The Poison, in December of 2005, and this one saw them following the metalcore, emo, and thrash movement that was going on, like all that kind of mixed together in one, like bands like Asking Alexandria, Bring Me the Horizon, were doing at this point in time, and even Attack Attack, I guess you can say. A lot of the crabcore stuff was, was, was doing that as well. And of course, it featured the hit song, Tears Don't Fall, I'm pretty sure even if you're not a fan of them, like I am not, that you still know that that chorus that everyone knows, it was made into a meme some years ago, so everybody pretty much knows what it is at this point. And they gained popularity in that scene because it wasn't necessarily that they were the heaviest thing in the world, they still kind of sounded similar to other metal bands, but they had a lot more catchier guitar riffs, and to be honest with you, their early stuff is actually pretty nice. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say because it's metalcore and really wasn't my thing that I hate it. It was nice what I preferred over other things. Maybe not, but I was sitting there and listening to this album in particular and going, you know, I can see why people enjoyed them because one minute they would sound heavy metalcore and then they'd go into this thrash metal riff and these choruses were memorable and they weren't like just cop-out choruses if you get my drift of things. It was it was a nice mixture of things and the screaming seemed to fit well in the places that it did. And then you do fast forward three years to Scream Aim Fire, which was their second studio album. And this was, I guess you can, this is when people said it was like the end of like their superstar peak right here. Because it did sound similar to that of their debut album with a bit of a like alternative metal change to it. All the other genres that they tackled on their debut album were still there, but they added a little bit more alternative metal, but fans were still satisfied nonetheless because it was similar to that of The Poison. However, in 2010, they released Fever, and you can definitely start hearing the change. Metalcore is still present partially, but this is when the more alternative Bullet From My Valentine come into play. And again, it wasn't necessarily that bad of an album. Like, I think the reason people may have taken it down more than their first two records was because it may not have been as heavy and as, like, edgy as they wanted it to be, but it's not 
again, the worst thing I've heard. It's actually, again, okay. It's nice. It's tolerable. I wouldn't really complain about it that much. Fast forward three years, and here's 2013's Temper Temper, which this was the one I remember people being, like, really, really mad at, because I had friends who were a fan of this band, and this was around my early sophomore year in high school, and I just remember my fans going, man, what happened to Bullet for my Valentine is they took more of a mainstream pop metal and new metal type sound, and like, like I mentioned, it kind of sounds like saliva mixed with Tool, and when you're mixing one of the greatest bands in the world in rock history to one of the bands who basically lives off of their name, which is just saliva, their piece of spit that just doesn't really belong in the music industry in itself that doesn't seem to be good. 2015 they released their album Venom and that seemed to be a rebound. People were liking it a lot more. It had, you know, parts of their first two albums coming to play, although I don't know why they needed Tears Don't Fall Part 2, but that is not anything we are here for. But around this time, during the touring to this album, Michael Moose Thomas shortly left or he was fired. I've heard both sides of this story as he recently came out and said the main reason he left, he says he left, the other bandmates said he was let go, uh, was because that the band became boring and they were only for writing mainstream hits that were going to get played on the radio and that's just not what we were early on and he said it got really same and boring. This is kind of when I turned and was like, you know, I think fans are just hating on this band because they really are just doing what they want to do and they know that they're not like the edgy like 20 year olds that they were back when the debut album came out. But when I heard this, I was like, you know, I wanted to try to say that they weren't going to be sellouts here. But hearing this, and you can believe him whether you want to or not, hearing this really made me go, if that's the case, and the change was intentional just for radio play and nothing else, that is blatant selloutry right there. Like, that is no time that I will throw out the sellout card. And like I said, it hasn't even been denied by the band either. When, when Michael Thomas said this, the band just kind of ignored this and never said he was wrong, he was right, or he got things twisted, or he's just saying that because he's mad. It was really just one of those things where he was like, this is what happened, this is why I left, and this was recent, this really wasn't all out around the time, and he also said too that his wife was pregnant with their first child, so instead of being there for him, the band kind of, you know, didn't contact him, didn't call him, and already had his replacement drummer in place before they basically booted him out of the band, which is also a shitty move in this case in time. So this is when I really was doing my research, even after hearing all these albums and going, wow, you know what? I don't necessarily feel sorry for this band if they are getting the hate, but I also wanted to look at it as, let's separate the music from the people in the band, all right? Even though they may have done this bad thing to their former drummer, just leaving him to hang like that and then basically backstabbing him, does that mean that it's their... F is that the main reason that the music is what people say it is? I don't know, but from what I had heard from those first five albums, wasn't necessarily bad. It wasn't as horrible as people were making it out to be. And, and then and it was also their first album with Jamie Mathias on bass of Jason Jones had left shortly after that as well. And then in 2018, they released their most recent studio album, Gravity, which came out July 29th of that year. And this is when they basically were diving headfirst into the mainstream. And this kind of reminded me a lot of like Asking Alexandria's self-titled, where it does have its heavier moments still. They even have a song on there that sounds like their old stuff, but of course they're trying different things. But I think the blatant difference between Asking Alexandria and Bullet For My Valentine was around the time Danny Warsnop came back, they felt like they could do different things, wanted to do different things, and they self-titled their album because we're the same band, but we're also changing and we want to introduce you in a new type of way. Bullet For My Valentine, despite having two new bandmates, really wasn't one of those bands that like needed that change in particular, as this is more pop metal than what they usually were used to doing, and people were caught off guard from this, and even I remember listening to this like the past week, and I was like, yeah, this is not like anything I heard from their first five albums. 
but then I'm still sitting there and thinking to myself, but is it really as bad as people were saying it was? Because I remember basically people saying they got hit with the Imagine Dragon big, and this is this is a big step down, this, that, and the other, and I go, no, it really wasn't. I mean, it's not like they hadn't tackled genres like that before per se. I mean, yes, it was a big jump from going, you know, being disappointed in 2013 to really reeling fans back in in 2015 to then kind of, you know, drawing them back out with this album. But at the same point in time, I'm sitting there going, I, I'm not hearing a lot of what people are saying, what makes this album bad. To me, I can still tell it's Bullet for My Valentine. Sure, that's different, but... I wouldn't, again, call it the worst thing I've heard. That probably isn't even the worst thing that I would have heard in 2018 had I decided to give it a review. There were a lot of bands that year. There's one band in particular that I could tell you that I was disappointed with that kind of took the more obvious mainstream pop rock route, and that was Daughtry, who early on had some, you know, pretty nice moments, but then slowly just deteriorated into that soccer mom rock, the the radio-friendly territory that just got old after a while. That was an obvious change, and that album came out the same year and was bad. Listening to this, I was like, no, it's not that bad, and even the band itself isn't necessarily that bad. Like, would this be, would they be on a list for, like, my top 10 or top 20 artists of all time. No, not really, because I don't really follow them as it is already. But, you know, getting into their albums and actually listening and seeing what made them nostalgic back in the day and what disappointed people and why it may have disappointed people, some people just like to talk out of their ass because bands change sometimes and, you know, you may not like it, but this doesn't mean that they're selling out. Once again, that comment can be held in regards whether the, the the thing about they only wanted to make mainstream rock for the radio was true or not. I'm still, you know, saying that maybe there is a slight thing of they wanted to and they did, but then they were just kind of like, you know, we're kind of tired of being heavy all the time in the first place, so I guess we'll just, you know, stick with this. Because to be honest with you, if they were really trying to make radio hits, then where have they been on the radio? I don't hear them on any radio apps. I don't hear them get played on any of the rock radios here. And it's not like the rock radios I listen to won't play that type of music. They'll play any type of rock. And not once in my entire life have they mentioned Bullet For My Valentine anywhere. So if they really were trying to make a quick buck, they would have done something like a Daughtry or a Theory of a Dead Man or a Fallout Boy where they would have turned into this obvious pop rock, sometimes just all pop ripoff, and they would be getting their songs played consistently on the radio when for them it's not really happening. They, to me, just kind of seem to fade off, have faded off into obscurity. They're still there and people still pay attention, but it, they have a lot of what those other bands have, which is they'll always be known for that one hit. I don't want to necessarily call them a one-hit wonder because I don't necessarily know what their other singles did, but they're always going to be the band that did Tears Don't Fall, and if they don't do anything close to that, then of course it's going to upset fans. It's like when Paramore took a complete left turn on albums like the self-titled and After Laughter, because, oh, it doesn't sound like what Misery Business sounded like, or Crush, 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 it, it's different, uh, and it's like, okay, but they don't have to sound like Misery Business all the time, wouldn't that be a little boring, and I commend them for taking the risks, even if it was intentional to sell out, they took the risks, and there wasn't necessarily a slow lead-up into the change like a Bring Me the Horizon did from Semp Eternal into Ammo. They definitely just did it, and when fan feedback was there, they're like, okay, well, you know, let's try something else, see if that works, or in this case, with 2015's Venom, we'll return to form, and then we'll decide whether we want to do something for the next release after that. So I think I've answered the question, is Bullet For My Valentine really that bad? No. Was their 2018 album Gravity really as bad as people made it out to be? No. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, again, it's the best thing in the world. It's not. But, you know, I just think this was overreaction by the people, overreaction by the fans in some sort. But hey, you know, if you don't like it, that's fine. But most of the excuses I heard for the reasons that people didn't like it were because, oh, it's not like their first album, or it's not like their second album. And I don't like people like that. And I know what you're going to say, don't you do that shit to Maroon 5 all the time? Yes and no, because 
I can reminisce about those first two albums and about how great they were before they definitely decided to take the sellout route because really those first two albums are the gems that's them at their peak that's them at their best in my opinion when they were actually still enjoyable to listen to and sounded like a band but when I listen to their songs now I don't expect it to be like their first album because I know it's not going to be like their first album it probably never will be like their first two albums again at this point so I just kinda look at what they become now how far they've come and still you know being hated because they just blatantly sold out like they did. That's my reasoning for that. But with Bullet For My Valentine fans, it's just they sold out because they don't sound like their first album and they need to be heavy again. And I'm like, I don't think that's like a legit reason. Like, give me a legit reason other than that. And I think I'll be able to listen to you a lot more because again, I have a lot of friends that are like that who were into the heavier music back in the day and now a lot of those bands have decided to take a different direction or God forbid put something different on their sound and it's, oh, they, they don't sound as good as before because they did this and that and this and that and I'm just like, did you even take time to listen to it or were you one of those people that just heard one single and was like, nope, done, I'm not even going to give it a shot. No, like you, you, you have to at least give it a shot before you can judge it, in my opinion, is the case. So that's just is what it is. I wanted to make this video because I thought it was something interesting and something that could, you know, spark up a conversation somewhere with someone. And I wanted to give my two cents on this and whatnot. So yeah, you guys can tell me in the comments below what do you think about this band? What do you think about their albums? Let me know what you think about all their albums. If you're a fan and whatnot. Just really let me know what you think and just don't give me like I don't like it because it's not like their first album this that and the other. Give me some good reasons and I will listen to your good reasons but other than that that's all I have to say so without further ado hope you're staying safe out there and I will catch you all in the next one. That's all I have to say right now. Bye!